students welcome to english language class in this class i am going to teach you chapter 1 from the book course book hanbel is the portrait of a lady the portrait of a lady chapter adapted from an autobiography of kushvan singh so kushvan singh he born on 1915 and died in the year 2014 he was an indian author lawyer and journalist so this story this prose taken from is an autobiography of kushvan singh it is the part of the the book called an autobiography of kushvan singh so this word portrait portrait means image so in this chapter the author wants to describe the image of his grandmother that is the main theme of this chapter its relationship with his grandmother the bond love care he wants to describe in this chapter so here the meaning of this portrait word is describes of the lady grandmother So, dear students, let us discuss with the prescribed textbook. Let's go, students. The Portrait of a Lady, Chapter One, written by Kushvan Singh. The Portrait of a Lady is the story of the author Kutwa Singh. He describes his relationship with his grandmother over the years. he wrote down his daily activities and how uh, she evolved as a characters as the time passed by and many changes taken place between kushvan singh and his grandmother relationship he explains her appearance which help us uh, create an idea in the mind first line my grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old woman she had been old and winged for 20 years that i had known her here winged the word means having lines or folds on the face it's a look like the old people face and that dry skin and uh, there was the line many lines were going here and there that's the meaning winked people said that she had once been young and pretty and had even a husband but that was hard to believe actually here the author talks about his grandmother he had known as he had known her for the past 20 years past 20 years means almost the author's age was 20 years and she had always been old and winged face so from the childhood onwards the author saw her face winged face old aged face he was old that she was once a young and pretty and had a husband means uh, some people people here the people means uh, from the family members the family members said to author that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a uh, husband which but that hard to believe the author say that i it hard to believe means he can't believe that my grandmother had husband and pretty and beauty because he was seeing her past 20 years she was old lady my grandfather's portrait hung above the mantel piece in the drawing room he wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes his long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked 
at least 100 years old he did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children he looked as if he would only have a lots and lots of grandchildren so here the author want to uh, describe about his grandfather also his grandfather's portrait hung on the wall portrait means the picture the grandfather's picture hung on the wall in which he wore loose fitted clothes like a kurti a turban and had a long white colored beard that reached his chest and he also appeared very old and author thought that he was someone who could have many grandchildren but not a wife or children that is the word explains that uh, sort of a person so it means worthy he is not worthy to have a children or a wife when he look at his appearance because very old and died also so that's why the author explains who could have many children um, grandchildren but not a wife or children the author could never imagine that once his grandmother was young and pretty that was the second line as for my grandmother being young and pretty the thought was almost revolting revolt means not believe cannot believe that's what the, uh, she used to tell the grand the author couldn't uh, imagine that once his grandmother was young and pretty because past 20 years from childhood onwards the author saw her grandmother aged and she often told us she often told us of the uh, games she used to play as a child that seemed quite absurd and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables of the prophet she used to, to tell us so here she used to, to she means grandmother grandmother used to, to tell him and his cousins about cousins means not only the author with author there are the uh, children were his cousins about her uh, childhood memories like the games she used to play as a child they found these stories illogical and uh, disrespectful because uh, it was beyond their imagination to think that grandmother Uh, was once a child and played such games for example um, many students did not recognize uh, many games which was the uh, traditional game which was uh, played by uh, before 20 years 25 years 15 years uh, at, uh, at present the children at those who are living in the present the children cannot uh, recognize so the what they will do when she uh, told stories and games they found these stories illogical and uh, disrespect because it was beyond their imagination to think that uh, grandmother was a child young and played like this because past to from the childhood onwards they they looked her very old they thought that her life story were like the other moral stories uh, which she used to tell us even uh, the grandmother's life story also is like a moral story so moral story means the grandmother used to, to tell to them she had always been short and fat and slightly bent her face was crease cross of uh, wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere so here the author want to um, describe uh, the uh, physical appearance of his grandmother short she was short and fat and sidely um, bent her face was 
क्रीस क्रॉस हियर क्रीस क्रॉस मीन्स the straight lines going here and there on the face you if you look at the uh, aged people you can see the face the li lines some of the lines going here and there so that's what is explained now no we were certain she had always been as we had known her old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years she could never have been pretty but she was always pretty she hobbled about the house in a spotless white with one hand resting on her vest to balance her stoop and the other telling the beads of a rosary her silver looks were scattered untidily over her pale and puckered face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayer yes she was beautiful she was like the winter landscape in the mountains and expense of a pure white serenity breathing peace and con contentment here the author want to explain about her grandmother so here his grandmother was short and fat and slightly bent this was the appearance of grandmother and in a posture and her face had a lots of wrinkles she seemed so old and she had been the same of the past 20 years according to the author um, she was beautiful but not pretty and she walked around the house in an uh, backward away and wearing spotless white clothes spotless white clothes here the meaning spotless white clothes means even a single drop not on her cloth very neat and clean that is called spot spot means a single drop uh, dot also and um with the beads of rosary beads of rosary means she used to always um, prayer they will uh, the christians used to have the rosaries always she um the rosary hanging from one hand and the other hand rested on her back for support uh, she always put one left hand on her vest and uh, vest means hip and is slightly bend you can you can image your uh, grandfather or grandmother old age people those who are in your house she had a silver colored hair that's what here they say silver locks locks means uh, silver locks means it portrait uh, the meaning of this words is the colored hair silver colored hair but silver colored means silver always looks white color so the white colored hair which was not neatly com combed and was disorganized which means Uh, scatteredly untidy untidy means it was not properly tied so always that uh, white color uh, uh, hair fell on her face she was constantly uh, telling the prayers that's what they are telling inaudible inaudible means uh, constantly she was uh, murmuring something prayer something but the sound is not coming out and she was constantly uh, saying the prayer and she compares her to the here the hatter compares uh, her uh, to the winter landscape here winter landscape means winter landscape means always looks like a white color because it is snow landscape in the mountain which has a peaceful and calm feel when you look at this uh, when you go to the landscape in the mountain winter landscape mountain you can feel peace and calm feeling 
so she, uh, the author compares her to the winter landscape in the mountains which has a peaceful and calm feel she was a live example of a pure white peace imitating unity so that's words why the author uh, compares with the mountain landscape winter mountain landscape means her uh, dress white color she always says a prayer she always school and she was always um, do her work so that's why it compares next paragraph my grandmother and i were good friends my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together she used to to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school she said her morning prayer in a monotonous uh, sing song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that i would listen and get to know it by heart i listened because i loved her voice but never bothered to learn it then she would fetch my wooden plate slate wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk and tiny hair than ink spot and a red pen and tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me after a breakfast of a thick and slate chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it we went to the school she carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs so in this paragraph in this paragraph the word monotonous so monotonous means dull and boring dull and boring and then bothered bothered means bothered means um to be concerned to be concerned and fetch were the the meaning of the pay, fetch word go for and then uh, bring back something for something which means that no, what we are fetching water in the water but no that is the meaning and a slate slate means in old and days um, people used to write on the black slate and uh, plastered plastered means covered here plastered means the word plastered means covered and then uh, erdan here erdan the very important thing that uh, erdan ink pot erdan ink pot means that uh, ink bottle no so that ink bottle made by um, uh, mud made by mud so this is what uh, things so here the author want to tell to us the important thing the author lived with her in village so that is the first point um, and they were uh, friends they were good friends they were good friends his parents left him with her to uh, settle in the city so the parent went to their uh, city and uh, they left him with the grandmother and they were friends and they lived in the uh, village the author's grandmother used to wake up him and uh, every morning and uh, get him ready to school and uh, she would recite her morning prayer so morning prayer after the morning prayer she um, uh, when uh, she bathed and dressed him up and um, he loved her voice uh, singing with the singing she loved the voice but would not try to memorize a word of what she spoke that's he never bothered about this thing and um the pen um the slate and uh, she cleaned the slate and the pen and covered inside and everything put together um, and gave to him and both used to walk to the school and his grandmother carried uh, stale chapati some chapati with her carried some chapati with her to give the um, 
डॉग्स विलेज डॉग्स विच वॉज ऑन द स्ट्रीट नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ माई ग्रैंड मदर ऑलवेज वेंट टू स्कूल विथ मी बिकॉज द स्कूल वॉज अटैच द टेम्पल द प्रीस्ट थॉट एस द एल्फाबेट एंड द मॉर्निंग प्रेयर वाइल द चिल्ड्रन सेट इन रोज ऑन एदर साइड ऑफ द वरंदा सिंगिंग द एल्फाबेट और द प्रेयर इन ए कोरस my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures when we had both finished we would walk back together this time the village dogs would meet us at the temple door they followed us to our home and crawling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them so in this paragraph his grandmother would accompany with to the school as the temple was attached with the school and she used to visit the temple daily on one side he would sit on the veranda a veranda means corridor and with the other children would singing the alphabet and the prayers in the chorus chorus means together on the other hand she would sit in the temple to read the scriptures scriptures means the holy books she start to use the holy books after finishing uh, they would walk back to the ch- home together the village dogs met them at the village door so they will uh, look at the village uh, dogs village it means street dogs they would follow them to their home till their home from the church from the school to till the home uh, this uh, street dogs were following them crawling here the crawling means making some sound that a dog sound you know uh, crawling and fighting each other fighting each other with the, uh, because chapati which they throw to them next paragraph here it is the real change and there was the uh, gap between um, author and his grandmother let us discuss my parents were comfortably settled in the city they sent for us that was the turning point that was the turning point in our friendship although we shared the room same room my grandmother no longer came to school with me i used to go to an english school in a motor bus there were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house so in this paragraph uh, the first turning point there is a gap there is a crack between um author and her grandmother so after when his parents got settled in the city so almost they settled they called them uh, they called them from the village to settle in the um, city that was the turning point of his friendship with his grandmother first pass they shared the same room even though they shared the same room grandmother and author uh, they shared the same room but she no longer would give him company to his school because she couldn't go to school with him he started going to an english medium school and uh, um, he went by motor bus so that's why she could come to pick and drop him Uh, there were no dogs in the streets when she could feed as uh, she did in the village and also uh, so she started feeding sparrows in the veranda of their uh, house that a new house she couldn't go with him and she couldn't um, offer some chapati to the streets uh, dogs because it is city uh, it's uh, the uh, the climate and uh, um, the atmosphere is not like a village so she couldn't do anything and they separated first 
time they separated each other next paragraph as the years rolled by we saw less of each other for some time she continued to walk me walk me up and get me ready for school when i came back she would ask me what teacher had taught taught me i would tell her english words and little things of western uh, science and learning the all the law of gravity and archimedes principle the world began round etc this made her unhappy she could not help me with uh, my lessons she did not believe in the things they th- thought at the english school and was distressed that there was no teaching about god and the scriptures one day i announced that we were being given music lessons she were she was very disturbed to her music had lived associations it was the monopoly of horless and beggars and not meant for gentle folk she said nothing but her silence meant disapproval she rarely talked to me after that so in this paragraph the author want to tell to us that as the years passed in the city their interaction reduced their interaction reduced uh, for some times she continued to uh, wake him up and would get him ready for the school she could not ask him what he had learned in the um, school that day he could ask she could ask to him the uh, he replied the scientific terminology and english words uh, made her unhappy when she, when he uh, say the scientific words like uh, uh, gravity and archimedes principles and the world begin round like this she couldn't understand she could not help him with the lessons because she don't know as his new school never taught him about the god and religious scriptures that was the idea of grandmother and this made her sad she did not approve of such an education when she came to know that she was uh, getting music lessons it disturbed her because according to her music was intact and it was an art for the beggars and uh, something so it is not a real music and not for those belonging to decent families and she did not like the uh, that he learned the music so she stopped talking to him about the music because that music is not for the decent family it's it's a looks like a, uh, the music for the beggar and some other uh, sounds so she, she did not like it the next paragraph when i went up to university i was given a room of my own then common link of a friendship was snapped my grandmother accepted her seculation with resignation here very very important word this seculation means that word says that um the state of being private and away from the people which means alone and uh, she rarely left her uh, spinning wheel to talk to anyone from sun rise to sunset she sat by her wheel uh, spinning and uh, reciting prayers only in the afternoon she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows while she sat in the veranda and uh, 
breaking the bread into the little bites. Hundreds of little birds collected around her, creating a veritable and a bedlam of chair chirpings. Some came and pinched on her legs, others on her shoulders. Some even sat on her head, and she smiled, but never shocked. Should them away. It used to be the happiest of her ever, of the day for a hunt. So in this paragraph, the author want to explain that. As the author one went to university for the higher education, he had a room of his own with no company, other company, other than French friends. The common link of his friendship with his grandmother that they had when they shared the same room in village and city house was changed now, and this is. his friendship with her ended the the friendship ended so first uh, pass from village to city and then second pass is from city to university now totally they separated each other she become more private and spend her whole day spinning wheel so that a wheelchair no and from sunrise to sunset she would sit and silently recite her prayers always she used to tell the prayers from morning to till evening in the afternoon in the afternoon she used to feed sparrows in the veranda uh, she took some bread and breaking the bread into small pieces she would feed hundreds of birds the birds would gather around her some sat near her and some on her legs and uh, some ho some or her shoulders and a few on her head so uh, she surrounded with the full sparrows bird she never should she never shaked but always smiled she was the happiest in that half an hour only half an hour during the whole day when she was in the village she was very busy with uh, taking care of her uh, Uh, author but now she left hello the next paragraph when i decided to go abroad for further studies i was sure my grandmother would be upset i would be away for 5 years and at her age one could never tell but my grandmother could she was not even sentimental she came to leave me at the railway station but did not talk or show any emotion her lips moved in prayer her mind was lost in prayer her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary silently she kissed my forehead and when i left i cherished the moist imprint as a uh, perhaps that lost sign of physical contact between us so in this paragraph the author want to tell to us when the author decided to go to abroad for uh, higher studies he believed it would be the last time to would see her as he would be uh, gone for a five long years for studies as they all reached the station um she held him uh, tightly and kissed his uh, forehead for as means that uh, head he thought it was the lost physical contact with her because five years gap um the impressed of her hand was uh, dear to him she was not a sentimental at all she never showed his sentimental and when he came back after five years she came to meet him at the station she looked just the way she did five years ago same thing and she never cried and she never uh, hug she never uh, uh, show any sentiment not a day old and she held him um 
again in her homes and was still uh, reciting her prayer so after five years also uh, how um, after saw before five years when you go to the abroad studies the same character the next paragraph but that was not so after five years i came back home and was met by her at the station she did not look a day older she still had no time for words and while she claps me in her homes i would hear her reciting her prayers even on the first day of my arrival her happiest two moments were with her sparrows whom she feed longer and with frivolous and rubbets so this is what the um, whole time she spent with the sparrows only she never exposed any sentimental after after came back from abroad in the even next paragraph in the evening a change came over her she did not pray she collected the woman of a neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing for several hours uh, she stumped the singing skins have the dilapidated drum and the sang of the home coming of a warriors we had to persuade had to stop to avoid who was shrilling that was the first time since i heard known her that she did not pray so here the author experienced different experience an evening one day evening she didn't follow our regular routine of prayers and she collected few women means uh, from uh, neighbor they all the women together and got a drum big drum and started singing with them and she stumped the uh, ruined foot of the drum and sang alone the whole family uh, persuaded to her to stop as the ma- she might get healed due to exaggeration the next morning she fell in hill it was a mild fever the doctors told them that it would go away but she took it differently according to her she would die as soon as her end was near she started prayer as she did not want to waste her lost hours in talking to anyone so she was lost condition because how long she could be alone nobody was there in the house to talk and she was alone on the wheelchair and she feeding food to sparrows and she doesn't have a person to share anything so totally she lost her conscious the next paragraph we protested but she ignored our protest she lay peacefully in bed pay, praying and telling her beads even before we could suspect her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers a peaceful pallor spread on her face and we knew that she was dead so in this paragraph this is last moment last moment that uh, the family protested protest means they told him many time you have to speak you have to talk no? but try to stop her but she lay peacefully on the bed and uh, chatting or prayers and doing her beads suddenly she stopped and the rosary fell from her finger lifeless finger lifeless means finger means almost died a calm pale appearance 
spread on her face and she was dead she was dead and last paragraph we lifted her off the bed and as is customary laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shawl after a few hours of mourning we left her alone to make arrangements for a funeral in the evening we went to her room with crude stretchers to take or to do comfort the sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with blaze of golden light we stopped off way in the courtyard all over the veranda and in the her room right to where she lay dead and stiff wrapped in the red shroud thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor there were there was a no chirping sound chirp means happy sound we we felt sorry for the birds and my mother fetched some bread for them she broke into little crumbs the way my grandmother used to do and throw it to them the sparrows took no notice of bird bread when we carried my grandmother's corpus off they flew away quietly next to morning the sweeper swept the bird crumbs into the dustbin so the finally in the last paragraph the family lifted her from the bed and laid her on the ground and wrapped her with the red colored cloth thousands of parrots sat silently near to her the hothas mother fetched some bird for the birds but they didn't eat any they flew away later as the family carried the dead body the sweeper removed the crumbs the next morning the wastage the birds were so sensitive they did not want to eat bread but were mourning the death of the one who had fed them for so many days and this is was the full story of uh, the portrait of lady kushwan singh and this is the story adapted from an autobiography of kushwan singh and this is the re- relationship that we could understand how the old people are suffering in a family we should take care of them we should take care of them thanks children